Oi there, Sorcerio here, and uh, today we will be looking at Terra. Uh, first, I will be just bringing you through some of the basics, uh, just the overall look of the game. It's a pretty nice looking, to tell you the truth. But, uh, alright, let's get started, shall we? First of all, uh, here are the servers. As you can see, there's the, uh, it's pretty standard, I guess, in most MMOs. At least a lot of the uh, modern ones. We have uh, PvP servers and PvE servers. It's a uh, pretty much uh, in PvE. It's you know standard player versus environment. And then there's PvP where people might randomly come up and attack you because there are uh, no factions in this game. I mean there is a faction, but it's just one big faction. And there's just fights just break out people fight you if they want to so yeah all right so let's get started we will select this pvp server jagged coast as a nice low population for obvious reasons people tend to not like being attacked constantly all right and this is where your characters would be uh if you had any if i had any i do have some uh, let's see. We shall create a new character. Alright, let's have a look here. First, we have the standard human. Standard issue humans. Pretty much with any MMO that you look at, you're going to find a human. Just pretty much. So they tend to be basics in a lot of... And MMOs, they tend to be the standard race, uh, for instance, Guild Wars. There was just different kinds of humans that you could play as. But uh, these humans here are pretty special, actually. They're not your standard all-rounders. I mean, any race here can play any class, which makes this a really awesome game. But uh, humans were... Well, basically the ones who put together the entire faction. They're, they were wanderers, uh, banished by their god. Yeah. The lore in this game is pretty interesting, how the gods work. I didn't get too much into it yet, but, uh, yeah. If that suits you. But, uh, here we have, oh, females. Of course, this is the standard skimpy armor for most, what tends to be in a lot of MMOs, skimpy armor for females. Because, you know what? The developers tend to be male. It's That's pretty much why it's like that. Either that or it's just, if the developers are female, then they just really love that kind of armor. Impractical, lovely, perfect. Alright, let's have a look at the catasthenics. Which are this these devilishly awesome race. I mean they just the horns. Them horns, I just and their armor, the the style choice of theirs, I love it. But uh they were kind of a uh, a, a race involved in a lot of war in that they uh they were kind of passed around by the gods to be used in uh wars. Uh, but in their current state, they deny the gods. They really don't like t relying on the gods too much because of the what happens in the past. The, they consider them too much trouble. They're very emotional. They're a very emotional race. To consider them uh, like, you know, I guess your average teenager. They make friends, and they make friends. They bond with them very well. But they're very hot-headed. Really, you, know, you make an enemy out of them, and... Uh, probably end up losing your head but uh, they very also very selfish as you know pertaining to what I was said before <laughs> all right let's see here ah the Amon big burly and dragonic they are fantastic I love this race I just you just feel powerful just playing as one of them because they're just so large also I mean come on dragon like I mean they don't uh, 
just they don't even have I mean you can't see it now but they don't even have like feet they have like claw feet it's fantastic but they're very straightforward and honest kind of people uh, they've had a very rough past having been used for war much like uh, the Castanics were and uh, they were enslaved by the Giants after their god had been killed but uh, as when they had been freed I, with the help of the several, the couple, several gods and the Castanics they tend to favor cooperation and uh, although they do have a very you know, wary relationship with the Baraka because they're related to Giants <laughs> But uh, let's go on to something more, uh, a little bit more happy, I suppose. And the music suits it so well. These are the potpourri. Uh, no distinguishable uh, male, female, of course. Because what they were, were they were uh, animals brought into sentience by this next race here we're going to look at called the Ellen. But they have all the feral instincts. You know, they act as animals do, but with that that hint of, you know, the intellect of, you know, all these bipedal beings that surround them. So, they're not really below or above anyone. They're just, they're right there, but they still hold their animalistic instincts and such. But their main aspect, or aspect, their main uh, goal in their lives because they were created just for this goal by the Ellen is to preserve nature and to serve nature interesting as they are they when you create one of these just I, I suggest that you create one just for fun if you ever play this game because you can make them look like several different kinds of animals it's fantastic and then we have the Ellen which I guess you can't say that they're the female version of a potpourri even though they are, they have the, really the only animal trait they have is a tail and ears. But what they are, are, uh, they're supposed to resemble, like, the everlasting beauty and peace, basically, of, like, a child. They're created of the god, uh, called Elenu. Basically parts of her. And their main goal is to, just as the potpourri, because they created the potpourri for the same purpose, is to protect and serve nature. Uh, also, something to note is they I like this, is they're not as innocent as they look. They're actually very vicious, apparently. Which I can see that. I mean, if you ever see one of these coming at you with a freaking axe, I'm pretty sure you'd be, you know, slightly confused as you lose your head, you know, as it falls to the ground. But, uh, yeah. Let's look at the Baraka. These are descendants of the giants. Awesome burly beings of power and intelligence love it they uh, deny the Giants and the ideals though the ideals of the Giants which was uh, you know to conquer uh, war much like they much they much prefer the balance of having power but also having you know that intelligence so as such you know they pursue knowledge and balance but they're very they're, they're they'll be really powerful allies and they are but they're actually nomads so interestingly enough, even though they they tend to be they seem to be part of the uh, that alliance that all of these races are part of, they actually they're just travelers. Interesting. Also, something to note is that they, as you can see, they just look as to be just male, but there's actually no uh, male female uh, distinction in them, which is awesome. Just regardless. Male, female, doesn't matter, but they all have beards. Perfect. Ah, and then we have here your uh, standard fantasy race here, the High Elf. Fantasy game would not be complete without this. They have the, you know, standard dainty elf. I mean, just these portraits. Yeah, but, uh, pretty standard. Uh, what th they were actually, but interestingly enough, they they're not so innocent as they are. They actually were very uh, warlike in the past. I guess to preserve their old ways, which is strange. 
I'm so strange as I guess they're afraid of change, so yeah, it makes sense. They have they do have an uneasy relationship with the other races because uh, in the past the other really the other races had to band together to uh, fend them off, uh, to stop them from just trampling over everything. But uh, for them, they are trying to redeem them redeem themselves by uh, well, first of all, with some of the recent events they've invited uh, the other races into their city for uh, you know, protection and they're trying to be a little bit more peaceful also something of note is that education and intellect is very important to the elves <laughs> alright let's pick one of these shall we uh... Baraka definitely just, just look at that Raw, awesome Let's go with this. Ah, okay. Now, what we have here. We have several different kinds of classes here. The melee, I suppose, see as it's very uh, uh, prominent in melee, as half the classes are melee. What we have here is the warrior, of course. Not just like your standard sword and shield warrior. No, no. Dual swords warrior. It's basically how it goes is the weapon that you wield is the weapon same weapon you have throughout the game just change it slightly you don't get to pick and choose your weapon it's the exact same weapon so throughout the entire game as a warrior you will be dual wielding swords period pretty awesome though this is a tank dps class obviously as you can see here if you have been reading this while i've been grabbing on here it has a player skill requirement but interestingly enough it's it depends completely on your play style, how hard some of these will be. This is an action game after all. Here we have your Lancer. This, you could say, is your sword and shield kind of deal. Except for the fact that they replaced your sword with a lance. Pretty nice though, I might say. It's an interesting class to play. It has a lot to do with, uh, basically, keeping your ground and blocking damage. Trying to prevent damage from being dealt to you and anyone behind you. It's pretty much stabbing the hell out of anything in front of you. Because you really don't have much choice. All you can really do is just either stab in front of you or swing your shield in the small arc in front of you. As far as I know. And here we have your Slayer. Of course. I mean, come on. Even though there's Warrior, I mean, you, you want to have a different kind of weapon. So here we go. This is your... Uh, say it's kind of I don't want to say it's a warrior kind it's like a your badass class because I mean with no matter what race you pick you're gonna have a big-ass sword and it's awesome it f makes you feel awesome to be able to swing this 360 degrees around your body just destroying everything in your path which is pretty much the same idea with the berserker except you have a big-ass axe which also makes you feel badass. It's just awesome DPS here. And then we have Sorcerer. I'm actually kind of... Uh, kind of on the fence with this. It's interesting to play. Then, uh, in that... In a caster class, at least in this one, your objective is to try to keep a good distance. Try to keep a standard distance while keeping your opponent away from you, while you know just bursting the crap out of them, it's it's interesting to try to play this. It, you do get an ability, uh, you get an ability that you know makes you jump backward, which is uh, which is pretty much well we can get into that later. I'll do uh, in depth on all these classes. <laughs> yeah, and here we have an archer, of course, which looks awesome with this big. <laughs> This is awesome with a, such a big dude with a bow. You don't exactly expect him to be an archer. But, uh... And we have, like... There's another range class. I haven't... I can't say too much about it. But I suppose it would be, like, your standard... Trying to keep your distance. And... Just kind of... Slowly whittle things down. You know, kind of drag people around and... Just slowly whittle them down. And, of course, we have Priest healer of course I mean 
That's what it tends to be. You have to have a healer in this game, despite how badass everything is. But I would assume that it would also have also have ways to damage himself, damage as well. Yeah. I mean, come on. All this stuff here. They need a healer, and as such, there is priest. And then we have mystic, which is kind of a combo. It's like a support, right? So, like, you could heal, but you could also do damage as well. Like, it's like someone says, I need a bit of help here. It's like, alright, here, have this, and you heal them. But you can also, you know, sustain a bit of damage as well. I mean, not sustain damage, but, like, deal a bit of damage as well. Which is interesting. I like how that would work. Combo class, kind of. Good. Alright, let's see here. Shall we pick? I just think that looks awesome. It's like it's part of his fist. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. Alright, let's have a look at character customization. Alright, so... It's kind of a... 50-50 kind of thing, because you cannot customize body type, uh, maybe some skin colors with certain races, and certain features on the face, basically. You don't, you don't really customize your body so much. Basically everyone's body type is the same. Your distinction is in your face and what army you pick. So what you can do here is pick, let's scroll on here, pick different kinds of faces. Which for the Baraka look pretty awesome. I mean, they're pretty distinct. I love them. They pretty much all have that beard. It's awesome. Right, nice varying bits of faces. Just full helm. <laughs> With a beard hanging out of it. Awesome. I think we'll go for the old man look. And then you can just a bit different shades of color. Right. Different color stone giant. Yeah, let's go with that. Ah, yes. That'll work. Go for some adornments. Ah, which also edits some of the facial features. Like I said, basically all of your all of your distinction is in your face. Hmm. Looks fairly interesting. All right. Now this is where it gets interesting because, despite the fact that you cannot customize your body, and you only have some select faces and shades and colors you can actually uh, you can actually just kinda tweak what exactly your face looks like which is interesting to me because that's just so strange it's so particular and when it comes to these little details on your face but you can't do much else with anything else let's just kinda toggle these a bit yeah make that nice and big beard out of work. Make him look very surprised. There we go. Alright then. Awesome. Now, this is interesting right here, because what you do is you pick an outfit, and as you gain equipment, your outfit actually starts to put itself together. So, 
basically what it's going to be is in the end your outfit will basically look like what you pick here Right, so it's only little designs will change. Say, like you get an armor piece, uh, and just the armor will change color and shades and you know designs. But different bits and pieces, like the gloves and uh, like whatever, like shoes, will change with your armor. Like as you as you put them on, they will be put on, and basically this is your initial armor design. Like this is what your armor will tend to always look like. Just with little tweaks change depending on what you put on. It's actually kind of an interesting way to do it. So it does give you a bit more distinction because you get to pick what your armor will essentially look like nearly all the time. And then there's also the, uh, of course, the different kinds of armor. So yeah, it's actually an interesting way to do it. Ah, and then of course you can select your voice, which is very important because you will do some grunting. Ah. I like that. Sounds very old manish. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. Then we go with a name by clicking on a name down here, of course. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, oh. Old true shoot. Maybe yeah, because I can't think of anything better. <laughs> ah, yes. Basically, you can have spaces in your name, but the thing is that it will put a period there instead. It's a little strange. Like, I guess not everyone. You don't see that a whole lot. I guess. Basically, MMOs tend to not let you have first and last names depending like there will be there may be in some of those say like DDO DDO where you can have like a first and last name slot but in this one there's just one space where you put your name so if you put a space there there will be a period there just so you know all right let's finish this up Alright, let's set us up a nice game with old Chushi here and we can look at some of the basics.